Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to make a definition of an infinite Riemann sum, and we're going to do some properties of integrals. And today we're going to find out a very easy way to do area under the curve. And this, defini this definition of an infinite Riemann sum says that if you want to do all of this right here, and you would like to do an infinite Riemann sum, some of us wanted to know how to do this in the calculator, then this is exactly equal to what's called the integral from a to b of f of x dx. And the way you input this on your calculator is you do integral of f of x and then you do comma x comma a comma b and that's how you would input it in your calculator and this will fi find what's called the net signed area under the curve. Now if it's all above the curve then this is going to just be the area. If for some reason I'm sorry, what I meant to say is that if your curve is all above the x-axis, if f of x is greater than or equal to zero, then this is simply area. But if for some reason f of x drops below the x-axis, that's what I mean by net signed area. We're going to have a lot of examples about this. But for today, we're going to find out that this infinite Riemann sum is connected to the integral. That's what we want to do. And then we're going to talk about properties of integrals. What can you do with, with integrals? All right, so here we go. Let's take a look at this first property. This first property says that, there we go, the integral from a to b of f of x dx is the negative of the integral from b to a of f of x dx. So if for some reason you ever have the integral from two to zero of f of x dx and you get that answer, if you flip these endpoints and you go from zero to two, then you're going to get an answer that's negative of this. So if you flip these endpoints, you're going to you're going to negate the integral. All right, this next one should make sense if you understand we're talking about area, and that's the integral from a to a of f of x dx equals zero. Now I'm going to show you why this should make sense. If you've got a function, no matter what f is doing, let's just say f is doing la 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 la, la and here's a. And you want to find the area under the curve from A to A. That means you have no width whatsoever. So how much area is underneath this curve exactly at this point? So this is a zero width rectangle. Zero width rectangle. And if that ever happens, then the integral, which represents the area under the curve, should be zero. All right, the next one is simply just a, a, a constant multiplier. If you have a constant in front of a function, you have the right to pull that constant out in front. That was the, the same thing was true for derivatives. The same thing was true for limits. It's also going to be true for integrals. You can pull that out in front. And also, just like with derivatives, if you have the integral of f plus g, then you can do the integral of f plus or minus the integral of g. So basically, you can do the integral you know, across a plus sign pretty simple and then the last one I'm going to show you algebraically why this makes sense or geometrically really if we want to find the area under a curve of some constant c so I'll let c equal like 6 and let's say I wanted to find the area under the curve from a to b well this constant 6 y equals 6 is just a straight line there's a graph of y equals 6 and I would want to know how much area is under the curve from A to B. Well, that just makes one big rectangle. So the area would be 6 times, now what's this width? That width is B minus A. So that's why the constant times B minus A is how you find that area. I'm going to show you why this is net signed area now, too. If this constant was underneath the x-axis, let me undo that because that's not straight. So let's do one here where the constant is underneath the x-axis, like the line y equals negative 3. And we're going to go between a and b. So let's take a look at this. So between a and b, out here at negative 3. Now this, the integral is going to be net signed area because this function value is negative 3 and then the width is b minus a and if you multiply those you get negative 3 times b minus a and this is going to be a negative number 
So we cannot interpret this as area if the function drops below the x-axis. The integral is the net signed area. So anything below the x-axis is going to be a negative area. All right, the last one is this summative property of integrals. That says the integral from a to c of f of x dx would be the integral from a to b of f of x plus the integral from b to c of f of x. And this doesn't even require for b to in, be in between a and c. So we would not have to have this. This is not a requirement of this property of integrals. Okay, so you'll be, pro th th believe me, these are common sense. When you practice these tomorrow, it'll be pretty easy. So uh, tomorrow's out of the book, and I will see you guys then.